brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. Aristotle. For other uses, see Aristotle, disambiguation. Aristotle, Aristotle, Greek, Aristoteles, Aristoteles, pronounced Aristoteles, 384 to 322 BC, was a Greek philosopher and polymath during the classical period in ancient Greece. He was the founder of the Lyceum and the Peripatetic School of Philosophy and Aristotelian tradition. Along with his teacher Plato, he has been called the father of Western philosophy. His writings cover many subjects, including physics, biology, zoology, metaphysics, logic, ethics, aesthetics, poetry, theater, music, rhetoric, psychology, linguistics, economics, politics, and government. Aristotle provided a complex synthesis of the various philosophies existing prior to him, and it was above all from his teachings that the West inherited its intellectual lexicon, as well as problems and methods of inquiry. As a result, his philosophy has exerted a unique influence on almost every form of knowledge in the West and it continues to be a subject of contemporary philosophical discussion. Little is known about his life. Aristotle was born in the city of Stagira in northern Greece. His father, Nicomachus, died when Aristotle was a child and he was brought up by a guardian. At 17 or 18 years of age, he joined Plato's Academy in Athens and remained there until the age of 37 c. 347 BC. Shortly after Plato died, Aristotle left Athens and at the request of Philip II of Macedon, tutored Alexander the Great beginning in 343 BC. He established a library in the Lyceum which helped him to produce many of his hundreds of books on papyrus scrolls. Though Aristotle wrote many elegant treatises and dialogues for publication, only around a third of his original output has survived, none of it intended for publication. Aristotle's views on physical science profoundly shaped medieval scholarship. Their influence extended from late antiquity and the early Middle Ages into the Renaissance and were not replaced systematically until the Enlightenment and theories such as classical mechanics. Some of Aristotle's zoological observations found in his biology, such as on the hecticatel, reproductive arm of the octopus, were disbelieved until the 19th century. His works contain the earliest known formal study of logic, studied by medieval scholars such as Peter Abillard and John Buridan. Aristotle's influence on logic also continued well into the 19th century. He influenced Islamic thought during the Middle Ages, as well as Christian theology, especially the Neoplatonism of the early church and the scholastic tradition of the Catholic Church. Aristotle was revered among medieval Muslim scholars as the first teacher and among medieval Christians like Thomas Aquinas as simply the philosopher. His ethics, though always influential, gained renewed interest with the modern advent of virtue ethics, such as in the thinking of Alice Dare McIntyre and Philip Ifoot. Contents, 1 Life, 2 Speculative Philosophy, 2.1 Logic, 2.1.1 Organon, 2.2 Metaphysics, 2.2.1 Substance, 2.2.1.1 Imminent Realism, 3.1.2 Motion, 3.1.34 Causes, 3.1.4 Optics, 3.1.5 Chance and Spontaneity, 3.2 Astronomy, 3.3 Geology, 3.5.2 Memory, 3.5.3 Dreams, 4 Practical Philosophy, 4.1 Just War Theory, 4.2 Ethics, 4.3 Politics, 4.4 Economics, 4.5 Red... 5.2 on later Greek philosophers, 5.3 on Hellenistic science, 5.4 on Byzantine scholars, 5.5 on the medieval Islamic world, 5.6 on medieval Europe, 5.8 on 19th century thinkers, 5.9 modern rejection and rehabilitation, 6 surviving works, 6.1 Corpus Aristotelicum, 6.2 loss and preservation, 7 legacy, 7.
9.1 notes, 9.2 citations, 9.3 sources, 10 further reading, 11 external links. Life, School of Aristotle in Misa, Macedonia, Greece. In general, the details of Aristotle's life are not well established. The biographies written in ancient times are often speculative and historians only agree on a few salient points. Aristotle, whose name means the best purpose in ancient Greek, was born in 384 BC in Stagira, Chalcidasi, about 55 kilometers 34 miles east of modern-day Thessaloniki. His father Nicomachus was the personal physician to King Amantas of Macedon. Both of Aristotle's parents died when he was about 13, and Proxenus of Adernius became his guardian. Although little information about Aristotle's childhood has survived, he probably spent some time within the Macedonian palace making his first connections with the Macedonian monarchy. At the age of 17 or 18, Aristotle moved to Athens to continue his education at Plato's Academy. He probably experienced the Eleusinian Mysteries as he wrote when describing the sites one viewed at the Eleusinian Mysteries, to experience is to learn, Pathane Math New. Aristotle remained in Athens for nearly 20 years before leaving in 348-47 BC. The traditional story about his departure records that he was disappointed with the Academy's direction after control passed to Plato's nephew Spusippus. Although it is possible that he feared the anti-Macedonian sentiments in Athens at that time and left before Plato died. Aristotle then accompanied Xenocrates to the court of his friend Hermias of Adernius in Asia Minor. After the death of Hermias, Aristotle traveled with his pupil Theophrastus to the island of Lesbos, where together they researched the botany and zoology of the island and its sheltered lagoon. While in Lesbos, Aristotle married Pythias, either Hermias' adoptive daughter or niece. She bore him a daughter, whom they also named Pythias. In 343 BC, Aristotle was invited by Philip II of Macedon to become the tutor to his son Alexander. Aristotle was appointed as the head of the Royal Academy of Macedon. During Aristotle's time in the Macedonian court, he gave lessons not only to Alexander, but also to two other future kings, Ptolemy and Cassander. Aristotle encouraged Alexander toward eastern conquest, and Aristotle's own attitude towards Persia was unabashedly ethnocentric. In one famous example, he counsels Alexander to be a leader to the Greeks and a despot to the barbarians, to look after the former as after friends and relatives and to deal with the latter as with beasts or plants. By 335 BC, Aristotle had returned to Athens, establishing his own school there known as the Lyceum. Aristotle conducted courses at the school for the next 12 years. While in Athens, his wife Pythias died and Aristotle became involved with her Pallas of Stagira, who bore him a son whom he named after his father, Nicomachus. According to the Suda, he also had an arrow Minos, Palafatus of Abidus. This period in Athens, between 335 and 323 BC, is when Aristotle is believed to have composed many of his works. He wrote many dialogues, of which only fragments have survived. Those works that have survived are in treatise form and were not, for the most part, intended for widespread publication, they are generally thought to be lecture aids for his students. His most important treatises include Physics, Metaphysics, Nicomachean Ethics, Politics, On the Soul and Poetics. Aristotle studied and made significant contributions to Logic, Metaphysics, Mathematics, Physics, Biology, Botany, Ethics, Politics, Agriculture, Medicine, Dance and Theater. Near the end of his life, Alexander and Aristotle became estranged over Alexander's relationship with Persia and Persians. A widespread tradition in antiquity suspected Aristotle of playing a role in Alexander's death, but the only evidence of this is an unlikely claim made some six years after the death. Following Alexander's death, anti-Macedonian sentiment in Athens was rekindled. In 322 BC, Demophilus and Eurymede and the Hierophant reportedly denounced Aristotle for impiety, prompting him to flee to his mother's family estate in Chalchi, on Euboea at which occasion he was said to have stated, I will not allow the Athenians to sin twice against philosophy, a reference to Athens's trial and execution of Socrates. 
He died on UBA of natural causes later that same year. Having named his student Antipater as his chief executor and leaving a will in which he asked to be buried next to his wife. Speculative philosophy, logic, main article, term logic. Further information, non-Aristotelian logic. With the prior analytics, Aristotle is credited with the earliest study of formal logic and his conception of it was the dominant form of Western logic until 19th century advances in mathematical logic. Kant stated in the Critique of Pure Reason that with Aristotle logic reached its completion. Organon, main article, Organon. What we today call Aristotelian logic with its types of syllogism, methods of logical argument, Aristotle himself would have labeled analytics. The term logic he reserved to mean dialectics. Most of Aristotle's work is probably not in its original form because it was most likely edited by students and later lecturers. The logical works of Aristotle were compiled into a set of six books called the Organon around 40 BC by Andronicus of Rhodes or others among his followers. The books are 1. Categories, 2. On Interpretation, 3. Prior Analytics, 4. Posterior Analytics, 5. Topics, 6. On Sophistical Refutations. The order of the books, or the teachings from which they are composed, is not certain, but this list was derived from analysis of Aristotle's writings. It goes from the basics, the analysis of simple terms in the categories, the analysis of propositions and their elementary relations in on interpretation, to the study of more complex forms, namely, syllogisms in the analytics and dialectics in the topics and sophistical refutations. The first three treatises form the core of the logical theory stricto sensu, the grammar of the language of logic and the correct rules of reasoning. The rhetoric is not conventionally included, but it states that it relies on the topics. Metaphysics, main article, metaphysics, Aristotle. The word metaphysics appears to have been coined by the first century AD editor who assembled various small selections of Aristotle's works to the treatise we know by the name metaphysics. Aristotle called it first philosophy and distinguished it from mathematics and natural science, physics as the contemplative theoretic philosophy which is theological and studies the divine. He wrote in his Metaphysics 1026 A16, If there were no other independent things besides the composite natural ones, the study of nature would be the primary kind of knowledge, but if there is some motionless independent thing, the knowledge of this precedes it and is first philosophy, and it is universal in just this way, because it is first. And it belongs to this sort of philosophy to study being as being, both what it is and what belongs to it just by virtue of being. Substance. Further information, hylomorphism. Aristotle examines the concepts of substance, usia, and essence, to tnene, the what it was to be, in his Metaphysics Book 7. And he concludes that a particular substance is a combination of both matter and form, a philosophical theory called hylomorphism. In Book 8, he distinguishes the matter of the substance as the substratum, or the stuff of which it is composed. For example, the matter of a house is the bricks, stones, timbers, etc., or whatever constitutes the potential house, while the form of the substance is the actual house. Namely, covering for bodies and chattels or any other differentia that let us define something as a house. The formula that gives the components is the account of the matter, and the formula that gives the differentia is the account of the form. Imminent Realism, main article, Aristotle's Theory of Universals. Like his teacher Plato, Aristotle's philosophy aims at the universal. Aristotle's ontology places the universal, Catholo, in particulars, Cath, Hegeston, things in the world, whereas for Plato the universal is a separately existing form which actual things imitate. For Aristotle, form is still what phenomena are based on, but is instantiated in a particular substance. Plato argued that all things have a universal form, which could be either a property or a relation to other things. When we look at an apple, for example, we see an apple, and we can also analyze a form of an apple. In this distinction, there is a particular apple and a universal form of an apple. Moreover, we can place an apple next to a book, so that we can speak of both the book and apple as being next to each other. 
Plato argued that there are some universal forms that are not a part of particular things. For example, it is possible that there is no particular good in existence but good is still a proper universal form. Aristotle disagreed with Plato on this point, arguing that all universals are instantiated at some period of time, and that there are no universals that are unattached to existing things. In addition, Aristotle disagreed with Plato about the location of universals. Where Plato spoke of the world of forms, a place where all universal forms subsist, Aristotle maintained that universals exist within each thing on which each universal is predicated. So, according to Aristotle, the form of apple exists within each apple rather than in the world of the forms. Potentiality and Actuality Further information, Potentiality and Actuality Aristotle with regard to the change kinesis and its causes now as he defines in his physics and on generation and corruption 319 b 320 a he distinguishes the coming to be from 1 growth and diminution which is change in quantity 2 locomotion which is change in space and 3 alteration which is change in quality the coming to be is a change where nothing persists of which the resultant is a property in that particular change he introduces the concept of potentiality, dynamis, and actuality, and telegia in association with the matter and the form. Referring to potentiality, this is what a thing is capable of doing or being acted upon if the conditions are right and it is not prevented by something else. For example, the seed of a plant in the soil is potentially dynami plant and if it is not prevented by something, it will become a plant. Potentially beings can either act poison or be acted upon passion, which can be either innate or learned. For example, the eyes possess the potentiality of sight innate being acted upon, while the capability of playing the flute can be possessed by learning, exercise, acting. Actuality is the fulfillment of the end of the potentiality. Because the end, telos, is the principle of every change, and for the sake of the end exists potentiality, therefore actuality is the end. Referring then to our previous example, we could say that an actuality is when a plant does one of the activities that plants do. For that, for the sake of which Tehuhenika, a thing is, is its principle, and the becoming is for the sake of the end, and the actuality is the end. And it is for the sake of this that the potentiality is acquired. For animals do not see in order that they may have sight, but they have sight that they may see. In summary, the matter used to make the house has potentiality to be a house and both the activity of building and the form of the final house are actualities, which is also a final cause or end. Then Aristotle proceeds and concludes that the actuality is prior to potentiality and formula in time and in substantiality. With this definition of the particular substance, i.e., matter and form, Aristotle tries to solve the problem of the unity of the beings. For example, what is it that makes a man one? Since, according to Plato, there are two ideas, animal and biped, how then is man a unity? However, according to Aristotle, the potential being, matter, and the actual one, form, are one and the same. Epistemology Aristotle's imminent realism means his epistemology is based on the study of things that exist or happen in the world, and rises to knowledge of the universal. Whereas for Plato, epistemology begins with knowledge of universal forms or ideas, and descends to knowledge of particular imitations of these. Aristotle uses induction from examples alongside deduction, whereas Plato relies on deduction from a priori principles. Natural philosophy. Aristotle's natural philosophy spans a wide range of natural phenomena including those now covered by physics, biology and other natural sciences. In Aristotle's terminology, natural philosophy is a branch of philosophy examining the phenomena of the natural world and includes fields that would be regarded today as physics, biology and other natural sciences. Aristotle's work encompassed virtually all facets of intellectual inquiry. Aristotle makes philosophy in the broad sense coextensive with reasoning, which he also would describe as science. Note, however, that his use of the term science carries a different meaning than that covered by the term scientific method. 
For Aristotle, all science, dianoia, is either practical, poetical, or theoretical, metaphysics 1025b25. His practical science includes ethics and politics. His poetical science means the study of fine arts, including poetry. His theoretical science covers physics, mathematics, and metaphysics. Physics. Main article, Aristotelian physics. Five elements. Main article, classical element. In his On Generation and Corruption, Aristotle related each of the four elements proposed earlier by Empedocles, earth, water, air, and fire, to two of the four sensible qualities, hot, cold, wet, and dry. In the Empedoclean scheme, all matter was made of the four elements in differing proportions. Aristotle's scheme added the heavenly ether, the divine substance of the heavenly spheres, stars, and planets. Aristotle's elements, element hot, cold, wet, dry motion, modern state of matter, earth cold, dry down, solid, water cold, wet down, liquid, air hot, wet up, gas, fire hot, dry up, plasma, ether, divine, substance, circular, in heavens, motion, further information, history of classical mechanics. Aristotle describes two kinds of motion, violent or unnatural motion, such as that of a thrown stone in the physics 254b10, and natural motion, such as of a falling object in On the Heavens 30820. In violent motion, as soon as the agent stops causing it, the motion stops also. In other words, the natural state of an object is to be at rest. Since Aristotle does not address friction, with this understanding, it can be observed that, as Aristotle stated, heavy objects on the ground, say, require more force to make them move, and objects pushed with greater force move faster. This would imply the equation. Display style F equals MV. Incorrect in modern physics. Natural motion depends on the element concerned. The ether naturally moves in a circle around the heavens, while the four Empedoclean elements move vertically up, like fire as is observed, or down, like Earth, towards their natural resting places. In the physics 215a25, Aristotle effectively states a quantitative law that the speed v of a falling body is proportional, say, with constant c to its weight w, and inversely proportional to the density rho of the fluid in which it is falling. Display style v equals c frac w rho. Aristotle implies that in a vacuum the speed of fall would become infinite, and concludes from this apparent absurdity that a vacuum is not possible. Opinions have varied on whether Aristotle intended to state quantitative laws. Henri Carter and held the extreme view that Aristotle's concept of force was basically qualitative, but other authors reject this. Archimedes corrected Aristotle's theory that bodies move towards their natural resting places. Metal boats can float if they displace enough water. Floating depends in Archimedes' scheme on the mass and volume of the object, not as Aristotle thought its elementary composition. Aristotle's writings on motion remained influential until the early modern period. John Philoponus in the Middle Ages and Galileo are said to have shown by experiment that Aristotle's claim that a heavier object falls faster than a lighter object is incorrect. A contrary opinion is given by Carlo Rivelli, who argues that Aristotle's physics of motion is correct within its domain of validity. That of objects in the Earth's gravitational field immersed in a fluid such as air, in this system, heavy bodies in steady fall indeed travel faster than light ones, whether friction is ignored or not, and they do fall more slowly in a denser medium. Newton's forced motion corresponds to Aristotle's violent motion with its external agent, but Aristotle's assumption that the agent's effect stops immediately it stops acting, e.g. The ball leaves the thrower's hand has awkward consequences. He has to suppose that surrounding fluid helps to push the ball along to make it continue to rise even though the hand is no longer acting on it, resulting in the medieval theory of impetus. Four causes. Main article, four causes. Aristotle suggested that the reason for anything coming about can be attributed to four different types of simultaneously active factors. His term Asia is traditionally translated as cause but it does not always refer to temporal sequence, it might be better translated as explanation, but the traditional rendering will be employed here. 1. Material cause describes the material out of which something is composed. 
Thus, the material cause of a table is wood. It is not about action. It does not mean that one domino knocks over another domino. 2. The formal cause is its form, i.e., the arrangement of that matter. It tells us what a thing is, that a thing is determined by the definition, form, pattern, essence, whole, synthesis or archetype. It embraces the account of causes in terms of fundamental principles or general laws, as the whole, i.e., macrostructure, is the cause of its parts. A relationship known as the whole part causation. Plainly put, the formal cause is the idea in the mind of the sculptor that brings the sculpture into being. A simple example of the formal cause is the mental image or idea that allows an artist, architect, or engineer to create a drawing. 3. The efficient cause is the primary source, or that, from which the change under consideration proceeds. It identifies what makes of what is made and what causes change of what is changed, and so suggests all sorts of agents, non-living or living. Acting as the sources of change are movement or rest. Representing the current understanding of causality is the relation of cause and effect. This covers the modern definitions of cause, as either the agent or agency or particular events or states of affairs. In the case of two dominoes, when the first is knocked over it causes the second also to fall over. In the case of animals, this agency is a combination of how it develops from the egg, and how its body functions. 4. The final cause, telos, is its purpose, the reason why a thing exists or is done, including both purposeful and instrumental actions and activities. The final cause is the purpose or function that something is supposed to serve. This covers modern ideas of motivating causes, such as volition. In the case of living things, it implies adaptation to a particular way of life. Optics. Further information, history of optics. Aristotle describes experiments in optics using a camera obscura in Problems, Book 15. The apparatus consisted of a dark chamber with a small aperture that let light in. With it, he saw that whatever shape he made the hole, the sun's image always remained circular. He also noted that increasing the distance between the aperture and the image surface magnified the image. Chance and Spontaneity Further Information, Accident, Philosophy According to Aristotle, spontaneity and chance are causes of some things, distinguishable from other types of cause such as simple necessity. Chance as an incidental cause lies in the realm of accidental things, from what is spontaneous. There is also a more specific kind of chance, which Aristotle names luck, that only applies to people's moral choices. Astronomy Further information, history of astronomy. In astronomy, Aristotle refuted Democritus's claim that the Milky Way was made up of those stars which are shaded by the Earth from the sun's rays, pointing out correctly that if the size of the sun is greater than that of the Earth and the distance of the stars from the Earth many times greater than that of the sun, then the sun shines on all the stars and the Earth screens none of them. Geology Further information, history of geology Aristotle was one of the first people to record any geological observations. He stated that geological change was too slow to be observed in one person's lifetime. The geologist Charles Lyell noted that Aristotle described such change, including lakes that had dried up and deserts that had become watered by rivers. Giving us examples the growth of the Nile Delta since the time of Homer and the upheaving of one of the Aeolian Islands previous to a volcanic eruption. Biology Main article Aristotle's Biology Empirical Research Aristotle was the first person to study biology systematically and biology forms a large part of his writings. He spent two years observing and describing the zoology of Lesbos and the surrounding seas, including in particular the Pira Lagoon in the center of Lesbos. His data and history of animals, generation of animals, movement of animals, and parts of animals are assembled from his own observations. Statements given by people with specialized knowledge such as beekeepers and fishermen, and less accurate accounts provided by travelers from overseas. His apparent emphasis on animals rather than plants is a historical accident. His works on botany have been lost, but two books on plants by his pupil Theophrastus have survived. Aristotle reports on the sea life visible from observation on Lesbos and the catches of fishermen. 
He describes the catfish, electric ray, and frogfish in detail, as well as cephalopods such as the octopus and paper nautilus. His description of the hectic alarm of cephalopods, used in sexual reproduction, was widely disbelieved until the 19th century. He gives accurate descriptions of the four-chambered four stomachs of ruminants and of the oviviviparous embryological development of the hound shark. He notes that an animal structure is well matched to function, so, among birds, the heron, which lives in marshes with soft mud and lives by catching fish, has a long neck and long legs and a sharp spear-like beak, whereas ducks that swim have short legs and webbed feet. Darwin, too, noted these sorts of differences between similar kinds of animal, but unlike Aristotle used the data to come to the theory of evolution. Aristotle's writings can seem to modern readers close to implying evolution, but while Aristotle was aware that new mutations or hybridizations could occur, he saw these as rare accidents. For Aristotle, accidents, like heat waves in winter, must be considered distinct from natural causes. He was thus critical of Empedocles' materialist theory of a survival of the fittest origin of living things and their organs, and ridiculed the idea that accidents could lead to orderly results. To put his views into modern terms, he nowhere says that different species can have a common ancestor, or that one kind can change into another, or that kinds can become extinct. Scientific Style Aristotle inferred growth laws from his observations on animals, including that brood size decreases with body mass whereas gestation period increases. He was correct in these predictions, at least for mammals, data are shown for mouse and elephant. Aristotle did not do experiments in the modern sense. He used the ancient Greek term pepiraminoi to mean observations or at most investigative procedures like dissection. In Generation of Animals, he finds a fertilized hen's egg of a suitable stage and opens it to see the embryo's heart beating inside. Instead, he practiced a different style of science, systematically gathering data, discovering patterns common to whole groups of animals, and inferring possible causal explanations from these. This style is common in modern biology when large amounts of data become available in a new field, such as genomics. It does not result in the same certainty as experimental science, but it sets out testable hypotheses and constructs a narrative explanation of what is observed. In this sense, Aristotle's biology is scientific. From the data he collected and documented, Aristotle inferred quite a number of rules relating the life history features of the live-bearing tetrapods, terrestrial placental mammals that he studied. Among these correct predictions are the following. Brood size decreases with adult body mass so that an elephant has fewer young, usually just one, per brood than a mouse. Lifespan increases with gestation period and also with body mass so that elephants live longer than mice, hmm, have a longer period of gestation and are heavier. As a final example, fecundity decreases with lifespan, so long-lived kinds like elephants have fewer young in total than short-lived kinds like mice. Classification of living things. Further information, Scala Natura. Aristotle distinguished about 500 species of animals, arranging these in the history of animals in a graded scale of perfection, a Scala Natura, with man at the top. His system had 11 grades of animal, from highest potential to lowest, expressed in their form at birth. The highest gave live birth to hot and wet creatures, the lowest laid cold, dry mineral like eggs. Animals came above plants, and these in turn were above minerals. See also, he grouped what the modern zoologist would call vertebrates as the hotter animals with blood, and below them the colder and vertebrates as animals without blood. Those with blood were divided into the live-bearing mammals and the egg-laying birds, reptiles, fish. Those without blood were insects, crustacea, non-shelled cephalopods, and shelled and the hard-shelled mollusks, bivalves, and gastropods. He recognized that animals did not exactly fit into a linear scale and noted various exceptions such as that sharks had a placenta like the tetrapods. To a modern biologist, the explanation, not available to Aristotle, is convergent evolution. He believed that purposive final causes guided all natural processes, this teleological view justified his observed data as an expression of formal design. Aristotle's Scala Natura, highest to lowest group examples. Given by Aristotle, blood legs souls.
rational, sensitive, vegetative qualities. Hot, cold, wet, dry, man, man with blood, two legs are, s, v, hot, wet. Live bearing tetrapods, cat, hair with blood, four legs, s, v, hot, wet. Cetaceans, dolphin, whale with blood, none, s, v, hot, wet. Birds, bee eater, night jar with blood, two legs, s, v, hot, wet, except dry eggs. Egg laying tetrapods, chameleon, crocodile with blood, four legs, s, v, cold, wet, except scales, eggs. Snakes, water snake, ottoman viper with blood, none, s, v, cold, wet, except scales, eggs. Egg laying fishes, sea bass, parrot fish with blood, none, s, v, cold, wet, including eggs. Among the egg laying fishes, placental salakians, shark, skate with blood, none, s, v, cold, wet, but placenta like tetrapods. Crustaceans, shrimp, crab without many legs, s, v, cold, wet, except shell. Cephalopod squid, octopus without tentacles, s, v, cold, wet. Hard shelled animals, cockle, trumpet snail without none, s, v, cold, dry, mineral shell, larva bearing insects, and cicada without six legs, s, v, cold, dry. Spontaneously generating sponges, worms without none, s, v, cold, wet or dry, from earth. Plants fig without none, v, cold, dry. Minerals iron without none, none, cold, dry. Psychology, soul, further information, on the soul. Aristotle's psychology, given in his treatise on the soul, Perisyches, posits three kinds of soul, psyches, the vegetative soul, the sensitive soul, and the rational soul. Humans have a rational soul. The human soul incorporates the powers of the other kinds, like the vegetative soul it can grow and nourish itself, like the sensitive soul it can experience sensations and move locally. The unique part of the human, rational soul is its ability to receive forms of other things and to compare them using the nous, intellect, and logos, reason. For Aristotle, the soul is the form of a living being. Because all beings are composites of form and matter, the form of living beings is that which endows them with what is specific to living beings. E.g. the ability to initiate movement, or in the case of plants, growth and chemical transformations, which Aristotle considers types of movement. In contrast to earlier philosophers but in accordance with the Egyptians, he placed the rational soul in the heart rather than the brain. Notable is Aristotle's division of sensation and thought, which generally differed from the concepts of previous philosophers, with the exception of Alcmaeon. Memory. According to Aristotle in On the Soul, memory is the ability to hold a perceived experience in the mind and to distinguish between the internal appearance and an occurrence in the past. In other words, a memory is a mental picture, phantasm, that can be recovered. Aristotle believed an impression is left on a semi-fluid bodily organ that undergoes several changes in order to make a memory. A memory occurs when stimuli such as sights or sounds are so complex that the nervous system cannot receive all the impressions at once. These changes are the same as those involved in the operations of sensation, or Aristotelian common sense and thinking. Aristotle uses the term memory for the actual retaining of an experience in the impression that can develop from sensation, and for the intellectual anxiety that comes with the impression because it is formed at a particular time and processing specific contents. Memory is of the past, prediction is of the future, and sensation is of the present. Retrieval of impressions cannot be performed suddenly. A transitional channel is needed and located in our past experiences, both for our previous experience and present experience. Because Aristotle believes people receive all kinds of sense perceptions and perceive them as impressions, people are continually weaving together new impressions of experiences. To search for these impressions, people search the memory itself. Within the memory, if one experience is offered instead of a specific memory, that person will reject this experience until they find what they are looking for. Recollection occurs when one retrieved experience naturally follows another. If the chain of images is needed, one memory will stimulate the next. When people recall experiences, they stimulate certain previous experiences until they reach the one that is needed. Recollection is thus the self-directed activity of retrieving the information stored in a memory impression. Only humans can remember impressions of intellectual activity, such as numbers and words. Animals that have perception of time can retrieve memories of their past observations. 
Remembering involves only perception of the things remembered and of the time past. Aristotle believed the chain of thought, which ends in recollection of certain impressions, was connected systematically in relationships such as similarity, contrast, and contiguity, described in his Laws of Association. Aristotle believed that past experiences are hidden within the mind. A force operates to awaken the hidden material to bring up the actual experience. According to Aristotle, association is the power innate in a mental state, which operates upon the unexpressed remains of former experiences, allowing them to rise and be recalled. Dreams. Further information, Dream Section Classical History. Aristotle describes sleep and unsleep and wakefulness. Sleep takes place as a result of overuse of the senses or of digestion, so it is vital to the body. While a person is asleep, the critical activities, which include thinking, sensing, recalling and remembering, do not function as they do during wakefulness. Since a person cannot sense during sleep, they cannot have desire, which is the result of sensation. However, the senses are able to work during sleep, albeit differently, unless they are weary. Dreams do not involve actually sensing the stimulus. In dreams, sensation is still involved, but in an altered manner. Aristotle explains that when a person stares at a moving stimulus such as the waves in a body of water and then look away, the next thing they look at appears to have a wave-like motion. When a person perceives a stimulus and the stimulus is no longer the focus of their attention, it leaves an impression. When the body is awake and the senses are functioning properly, a person constantly encounters new stimuli to sense and so the impressions of previously perceived stimuli are ignored. However, during sleep the impressions made throughout the day are noticed as there are no new distracting sensory experiences. So, dreams result from these lasting impressions. Since impressions are all that are left and not the exact stimuli, dreams do not resemble the actual waking experience. During sleep, a person is in an altered state of mind. Aristotle compares a sleeping person to a person who is overtaken by strong feelings toward a stimulus. For example, a person who has a strong infatuation with someone may begin to think they see that person everywhere because they are so overtaken by their feelings. Since a person sleeping is in a suggestible state and unable to make judgments, they become easily deceived by what appears in their dreams, like the infatuated person. This leads the person to believe the dream is real, even when the dreams are absurd in nature. In Duanima E3, Aristotle ascribes the ability to create, to store, and to recall images in the absence of perception to the faculty of imagination, Fantasia. One component of Aristotle's theory of dreams disagrees with previously held beliefs. He claimed that dreams are not foretelling and not sent by a divine being. Aristotle reasoned naturalistically that instances in which dreams do resemble future events are simply coincidences. Aristotle claimed that a dream is first established by the fact that the person is asleep when they experience it. If a person had an image appear for a moment after waking up or if they see something in the dark it is not considered a dream because they were awake when it occurred. Secondly, any sensory experience that is perceived while a person is asleep does not qualify as part of a dream. For example, if while a person is sleeping, a door shuts and in their dream they hear a door has shut, this sensory experience is not part of the dream. Lastly, the images of dreams must be a result of lasting impressions of waking sensory experiences. Brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, and make comments. We love feedback.